Hello everyone, welcome to our second virtual pub quiz. Uh, thanks for joining me again. Um, I suppose if you are, it means you didn't hate the last one, I didn't offend you, and you got a reasonably high score, and you weren't annoyed by playing it as a result of it. So thanks for joining again. What a week it's been. Clocks went forward, means that there's an extra hour of light that we can't enjoy. It's a bit of a kick in the teeth, isn't it, really? It's a bit harsh. But uh, on the baby front, big news, Mr. and Mrs. McPaul. Fantastic news, birth of a son, sunny, great, fantastic, over the moon for you all. I think Mr. Novak, you know, didn't want to be outdone, so he gave birth to a son as well, so happy for all of you guys. Congratulations on the births of him. Um, shame we can't see him, but hey, we'll see him soon, I'm sure. A couple of shout outs to people who liked the video last week, really appreciate that, thank you. It means that, again, you didn't hate it, so thanks. Um, to all those who liked it and commented, thank you. A couple of shout outs. Carl, representing year 13, you know, stay strong, stay strong. Uh, Harry in your 12, thanks again for commenting. Really appreciate that. And Sammy, long time no here. Hope you and George are okay, representing the Jubilee crew. So uh, maybe we'll catch up some point soon. But look, thanks for playing again. Um, I think we should move on to the quizzes, the questions. There's again four rounds. Um, there's actually 11 questions for the music round because if uh, <laughs> YouTube might try and copyright it again, we it's their property, I suppose they're allowed to. So I've added an extra question for the music round just in case one gets cold in the copywriting. But you know, that was a lesson learned last week. Um, so round one, um, we're gonna do is the natural world. Now again, last week people were very inventive about how they did questions and with their friends and family. So do the same thing that you did last week. Uh, I don't think we should change anything unless you've got a good suggestion, so please send them forward if you have. But yeah, round one, the natural world, because we can't enjoy it. So, you know, let's have some questions that remind us of how beautiful it is out there. So, pens at the ready or phones, no phones, no cheating. But if you're using your phone to record your answers, fair enough. My favorite one was people taking a picture of their answers and forward it onto their friends, you know, but no cheating. But if you do, who cares? Right, anyway, so question number one of round one is, what is the second highest mountain in the world? What is the second highest mountain in the world? I think we all know the highest. Question number two. What is the longest river in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland? What is the longest river in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland? That just, you know, omits the Republic of Ireland. Here's a cool one. The breed of dog, the Datsun, is named after what other animal? The breed of dog, Datsun, is named after what other animal? And it's not another breed of dog. But it's named after another animal. Didn't know it, but it is. Question number four. Which winged creature is unable to fly if its body temperature falls below 30 degrees Celsius. I mean, obviously we're all checking for high temperatures of 38, but this one, this, this is a creature that can't fly. It's a winged creature unless it is above 30 degrees Celsius. What animal, what animal? Now, anyone who went on this trip should know it and anyone in year seven who studied it should know it a little bit. Anyone who's done Latin again should know it, but which, Active volcano overlooks the Italian city of Naples. So that's question number five. Which active volcano overlooks the Italian city of Naples? Now, if I've got the fact that it's an active volcano wrong, apologies. But hey, what volcano, active or not active, overlooks the Italian city of Naples? Question number six. True or false? Cows kill more people than sharks each year. True or false? Cows kill more people than sharks each year. There's no middle ground, it's true or false. Number seven, question number seven. Roughly, how long does it take a pineapple to grow to be edible? Roughly, how long does it take a pineapple to grow to be edible? And there's a bit of a time frame I'll, I'll give you a bit of credit for. But roughly, how long does a pineapple take to grow to be edible? Natural world. I love pineapple. Great stuff. A rather morbid one. Question number eight. Which creature has killed the most humans in our history? 
Which creature has killed the most humans in our history? And if you want to be clever, I'm just going to say no to this one. It's not human beings or homo sapiens, no. What other creature has killed the most humans in history? If you're going to have a, a, a kind of a quiz round on the natural world, it's only right to have a question about David Attenborough. So here we go. Question number nine. How old is David Attenborough? How old is David Attenborough? And the last question for the natural world, and I'd like to say is a reasonably simple one, is what is the largest ocean in the world? What is the largest ocean in the world? So that's the end of round one. Uh, I'm sure you might just pause it at this stage. Feel free to do so. But question number one is what is the second highest mountain in the world? Question two, what is the longest river in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland? Number three, the breed of dog, the Datsun, is named after what other animal? Question number four, sorry, my screen's just gone blank. Question four, which winged creature is unable to fly if its body temperature falls below 30 degrees Celsius? Question five, which volcano, active or not, overlooks a city of Naples? Question six, true or false, a cow kills more people than sharks each year? Question number seven, roughly how many, how long does it take a pineapple to grow to be edible? Um, question number eight, what creature that isn't humans? What creature has killed the most humans in our history? Question number nine, how old is David Attenborough? And question number 10, what is the largest ocean in the world? Round one. So you may wish to take a break at this point. Totally up to you. Like last week, there's nothing different. Feel free to pause me. If you're pausing me, see you in a bit. If you're just playing along, let's just keep going. Welcome back. Round two for those who have paused me. Welcome back. I hope you had a good drink, uh, maybe took a bit of a snack. Hope your snacks aren't running out. The queues in the supermarket aren't too bad, so you know, just pop out for a chocolate bar if you have to, because that's your one trip a day. Right, round two. What's it on? Round two. It's on the NHS and healthcare, because let's be honest about it, we all love the NHS. Even before this, I think most of us love the NHS. It's an amazing thing, and thank God for the NHS. And again, much love and a big shout out to everyone who is working in the NHS. Maybe some of your parents, or maybe you are, who are watching this, a member of the NHS. Thank God for you. So, yeah, this round's on you. This round's for you. I hope you'll get the answers for it. Anyway, question number one. Complete the phrase. This is reasonably simple, but complete the phrase. Catch it, bin it. Complete that phrase. Question two of round two. What year was the NHS created? And anyone that's been in my GCSE class should know this. Unless you're in year 10, in which case we haven't done it yet. But anyway, question number two, what year was the NHS created? I love this fact, and this is really good. Again, this is from the GCSE textbook um, that year 11s should be studying. Question three is, since the creation of the NHS, how many years has a UK woman's life expectancy risen by? So how many years has the woman, UK woman's life expectancy risen by? So it went from a certain age to a certain age now. How many years has it risen by? I'll give you a clue. It's more than one. It's more than one year. Question four. Everyone knows Edward Jenner. Well, I'd hope you would. But if, if you don't, hey, he's quite a famous guy. He was the first person to create a vaccine for smallpox. Um, obviously, vaca being the Latin for cow. He's quite famous. You do him in science and history. But less known is the boy whom he tested it on. The first person he tested it on was a boy. What was the name of the boy that Edward Jenner tested his vaccination on? What was the name of the boy? Question five, again, following on the theme of famous kind of bacteriologists and kind of discoveries. Alexander Fleming discovered what wonder drug, if you want to call it a drug, but they called it a wonder drug. What did he discover? They called it a wonder drug. Alexander Fleming. Question five. What did he discover? Now, I was in a lesson recently and I heard this being the topic. So again, if you listen to your teachers in science and you're kind of just paying attention, you should know this as well. Question number six. Why is Dolly the sheep famous? Why is Dolly the sheep famous? 
And if you have never heard of Dolly the Sheep, it's quite famous. And it's famous for a reason. So if you didn't know, have a guess. Question seven, bless him, he's just come out of isolation himself, self-isolation. Um, question seven, who is our current health secretary? Who is our current health secretary? I think unless you're eight years old, you can probably remember, or well, maybe nine years old, if you remember the 2012 London Olympics, it was a great time. I think we all really enjoyed that. But my favorite moment actually had nothing to do with sport whatsoever. Because the former health secretary, before the person I asked in question seven, Jeremy Hunt, um, was famous for a bit of a gaff. He made a bit of a boo-boo. He did a bit of a gaff during the Olympic games. So question number eight is what gaff did Jeremy Hunt famously make during the Olympic Games of 2012? And if you want to know, it was on a battleship or heavy cruiser, depending on which way you want to classify the ship it was on. All right, question number nine. Nye Bevan was a Secretary of State for Health when the NHS was created. But what part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland did he come from? What part? So that's either England, Scotland, Wales, or Northern Ireland. What part? Again, if you don't know, just have a guess. You've got a 25% chance of getting it right. It's not bad odds. All right. Question 10, approximately. Okay, so I'm not looking for kind of like within one. But approximately, for question 10, how many people work for the NHS? Approximately how many people work for the NHS? So that's question 10 of round two. Um, question one was complete the phrase, catch it, bin it. Question two, what year was the NHS created um, or formed? Question number three, since the creation of the NHS, how many years has a woman's life expectancy risen by? Question four, Edward Jenner famously created the first vaccination for smallpox. What, or sorry, who did he test it on? Question five, Alexander Fleming discovered what? Question six, Dolly the Sheep is famous for what? Who is our current health secretary? Question eight, the former health secretary, Jeremy Hunt, famously made what gaff during the 2012 Olympic Games? Question nine, Nye Bevan was Secretary of State for Health when the NHS was created. What part of the United Kingdom did he come from? Um, and number 10, approximately how many people work for the NHS? So that's the end of round two. Um, I would probably suggest having a break at this point because obviously your brains are knackered because those are really hard questions and you just think, that was hard. But if you're still with me, if you're not finding it too difficult, we'll just carry on. Now, round three is a music round. Um, this is my favorite one. And after last week's music round where I had some problems with YouTube, um, I'm gonna have to give this one a go, but we'll see how it turns out. Um, and the proof will be in the pudding if you're actually able to watch this video. But let's hope we don't get banned for copyright. And this round is still the music round, but it's actually music from TV shows or sitcoms. And there's 20, well, technically there's 22 marks available here because there's 11 songs. But what I want you to do is name the sitcom that the song is the opening theme for, or the song from it, as well as the decade that it was first shown. So I want the sitcom that it's from and the decade that it was first aired, as in shown. So we'll start with a good one. So here's number one, song one from, oh, I'm gonna turn the volume up because you never know. Right, song one. So like I said, I want the TV show and the decade that it was first aired. Like I said, I want the um, TV show or sitcom and the year that it was first aired. Just so you know, when you actually get the actual song, it's not hard, is it? But there's a great remix of that theme tune and 50 Cent. It's so good, so good. Right, number two, song two, song two. Let's YouTube load up. I have preloaded them, so bear with me. Oh, okay. It's coming. 
I don't want to sing it out for you because that could be really embarrassing. Okay, here's song number two. If you walk through the garden, you better watch your back. Well, I beg your pardon, walk a straight and narrow track. That was song two. Song two. Song three. When it loads up. Forgive my really bad laptop and uh, the really poor processor. So, song three. So, the sitcom and the year that it was first aired. Song three, song three, song four. I literally grew up on this one, so. Love it. Right. Ah, there we go. Right, okay. Quite a lot of us might remember making the Blue Peter cardboard version of that. Oh, here's a good one. Mentioned it in an assembly recently. Rewatched it recently. It's a little bit. Ooh. But again, let's go YouTube. Come on, work with me. famous one so that was song five that was song five I'm sure we could probably have a guess at that one it's on Netflix now right song number six song number six Okay, so that was song number six. That was song six. Again, I don't want the band. Sorry for reminding you. I want the sitcom or TV show and the year that it was released. What the year it was released. Right, this is um, a nice one. 
Song seven. Or not. That was song seven. Song seven. Didn't think much of the recent one that they released. I thought it was a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes the original run is just good enough. You don't need to redo it, do you? That's the problem with sitcoms sometimes. They just try and recreate it and it just doesn't hit the mark. Anyway, classic. Song eight. <laughs> Song eight, song eight. So on to song nine. When it loads. When it loads. You you gotta get this. But the decade. Number nine, on to number ten. <laughs> this one's quite difficult because they mention the name a lot, and you'll probably know it anyone anyway, but they mention the actual show quite a lot, so bear with me. Right, that's number 10. That was 10. 10. I remember when that first came out, and sorry, Mum, but you didn't like it because you didn't think that was proper good children's TV. You just thought it was a bit crass. And what's it teaching children to speak like that? I remember her saying, Mary Whitehouse. Anyway, moving on to song 11. Song 11. <laughs> song 11. So that is the end of round three, uh, which is a music round. I've repeated myself several times just as a reminder for all 11 of those songs. I don't want the song name or title, I just want the sitcom or TV show that it came from as the theme tune or the song that it came from and the year that it came out. So, oh, hello. sorry, I'm just trying to sort something out. Oh, there we go. Right, on to round four which is our good old fashioned general knowledge. Our good old fashioned general knowledge. Again, I, might, <laughs> I think it might have insulted a few people by saying this is the round for people that don't know anything or just the you know, jack of all trades person. Kind of is though, isn't it? Anyway, right, okay, round four. General knowledge, general knowledge. Um, question one of round four. Question one of round four. I love this one. 
Which US presidents have shared the same surname but are not related? Which US presidents have shared the same surname but are not related? I just want the surname. I don't need both of um, their first names. And I really hope that Trump's kids don't ever become president. Junior Trump, whatever. Sorry, I shouldn't get political, should I? But come on. Anyway, enough of my <laughs> spiel on Trump. Moving on, question number two. A female fox is called a what? A female fox is called a what? We had last week a female deer is a doe. A female fox is called a what? I would put female dog. I think that might offend people. Right. Question number three. How many players are there in a rugby league team? How many players are there in a rugby league team? Question three. Question four. Name the missing Weasley child. Look, I love Harry Potter, so every single one of these is going to have a question about Harry Potter, so apologies in advance. But here we go. Name the missing Weasley child. Bill, Percy, Fred, George, Ron, and Geneva, or Ginny. Name the missing Weasley child. Bill, Percy, Fred, George, Ron, and Ginny. Question number five. Look, again, as a history teacher, I'm naturally always going to try and get some element of history in it. But I haven't named a history round yet. Yet. So, you know, going to have some sort of history in it at some point. So question number five. Britain declared war on Germany on the 3rd of September of what year? Britain declared war on Germany on the 3rd of September of what year? That's a funny fact. We've declared war on Germany twice. They've never declared war on us. Anyway, we've declared war on them on the 3rd of September. Of what year? Of what year? Question six. The Queen Elizabeth II Bridge crosses what river? The Queen Elizabeth II Bridge crosses what river? Question number seven. Who was the Roman god of the sea? Who was the Roman god of the sea? Roman god of the sea. Question number eight. I quite like my age of celebrities, so I'm going to give you another one. How old is Natalie Portman? How old is Natalie Portman? Less surprising, that one. Question number nine. Spot the odd one out. Spot the odd one out. Mary Adock, Peregrine, Samwise, Gandalf. Spot the odd one out. Mary Adock, Peregrine, Samwise, and Gandalf. Who's the odd one out there? Question number ten. Question number ten. On the classic Monopoly board, now I love Monopoly. I'm a bit of a... I'm, I don't cheat. I've never tried to be the banker to then just siphon funds away from everyone else. Um, I've never tried to do that. And I'm talking about Monopoly here, not the real world. But when I play Monopoly, I don't cheat. But I'm a bit of a scumbag. Um, they, I think they have brought in rules. But I used to buy um, houses. And only get, buy four houses. Don't buy a hotel because it frees up ho houses for everyone else to get. So just buy up all the green houses and just never sell them. Don't bother. It's not worth getting a hotel because then everyone else can get hotels. Uh, sorry, houses. So then I used to then sell the houses and then put them on my other properties the other side of the board. So, yeah. Causes a lot of problems. Um, I'm hearing you if you've already played Monopoly with the family or with your friends <laughs> and you're just now not talking to each other and you're in separate rooms. But anyway, on the classic Monopoly boards, this is the final question. Question 10 of round four. On the classic Monopoly board, you start at go, all right? You're not passing it. You are just starting on go, just like you would normally. If you roll an eight, what space would you land on? If you rolled an eight, what space would you land on? So that is question 10. And that is the final question that actually counts. Um, the final question that counts. Um, it's out of 52. It's out of 52. Unless, of course, when this process is on YouTube, they take away a couple of those songs. So 
uh, see what happens. Anyway, I will give you a final random one. I did it last week and I quite enjoyed it. Poor Claire, a bit embarrassing. But anyway, here's a good one. And anyone who's in my classes, if they pay attention, they should know this because I use this quite commonly. As of this morning, and I didn't go out of my house to check. This is just because I remembered from the last time. So as of this morning, how many miles have I done on my car? How many miles has my car driven or drove? How many is it on the clock? How many miles? Good luck with that one. Again, it doesn't count to the overall total, but you never know. If you get it, it's an extra point. So good luck with that. Right, so those are all the questions for this week. Um, I think it's best if we just go to the answers because I know you're really, you know, you're dying for them. You, you just can't wait. You're literally just down the floor kind of begging for the answers because you're so into this. But anyway, answers. Round one. The natural world. The highest mountain, or sorry, the second highest mountain, obviously Everest is the highest, and the second highest mountain is K2. Um, it's in the Karakoram range in Pakistan. What should, I love it. I love mountains, I'm a bit of a, I think I quite like them. As a history teacher, I'm not supposed to like geography, but I quite do, I quite enjoy it, and I like K2. Favourite mountain, anyone out there who's got their own favourite mountain? The Matterhorn, it's brilliant. Right, okay, question two, the answer of the longest river in the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is the Severn, the River Severn. The breed of dog, the Datsun, is named after what other animal? It's the badger. Apparently, Dash is um, German for badger because they're quite skinny. So apparently, it enabled them to go through the, into the burrows to root out badgers. Don't tell Brian May. Question four. Which winged creature is unable to fly if its body temperature falls below 30 degrees Celsius? It's the butterfly. It's a butterfly. That's why Northern Europe doesn't have many of them because it's a bit too cold. But it's a butterfly. It can't fly. Right, which active volcano, I, I, I can't clarify whether it's active or not, but I think it is. Anyway, which active volcano overlooks the Italian city of Naples? That is Mount Vesuvius. Climbed it a few times now with students. Great time. Lost a couple of people out there. I'm talking to you, Joe Williams and Zach Glenn. Running off. But anyway, it's to the top of a mountain. It's not hard to find where you were. Anyway, <laughs> question five is Mount Vesuvius. Question six. True or false? Cows kill more people than sharks each year. It is true. Um, supposedly, actually, again, when I was reading this, um, it's in the QI Book of Animals. Apparently, 25% of them are by accident, but the majority of cow deaths are actually planned, as in the plan, as in they intentionally try and trample you. But they kill more people than sharks. So watch out. When you're next allowed out and you're walking through a cow field, be careful, because it's also it's private property, so you shouldn't be in it. All right, okay, so roughly how long does it take a pineapple to grow? Apparently it's between 18 months and two years for a pineapple to fully grow, so you can eat it. I love them, but is it worth it? So if, I don't know, if a relative gives you a baby pineapple um, for Christmas or for your birthday to grow it, they're probably trolling you. All right, question eight. What creature has killed the most humans in history? It's the mosquito. The mosquito. Again, if you want to be that pedant, it's the female mosquito, but it's the mosquito. That's killed the most humans in history. Some estimates say, and again, it's not confirmed, but some estimates say that nearly half of all human deaths throughout our history have been down to the mosquito. If anyone can validate that, can I? Yeah, go for it. Tell me if it's right or wrong. Okay, question nine. How old is David Attenborough? He's 93. Same age as Queenie. Love our Queen. But David Attenborough, I think we all love a little bit more. He's 93 years young. And round... Uh, sorry, question 10 for round one is, what is the largest ocean in the world? It is the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean. So total up. I know some people were taking pictures of their, score, of their answers after each one and sending it. So there we go. That's round one done. Round two... The NHS and healthcare, so this is um, to you guys. Complete the phrase, catch it, bin it, kill it. Catch it, bin it, kill it. Question two. What year was the NHS created? 1948. My dad was born four days before the creation of the NHS on the 5th of July, 1948. Again, if, you, if you're in my history year 11 class, or have been, and I've taught you that, and you didn't get it right, 
and you actually care enough to watch this video, shame on you if you didn't get it right. Okay, since the creation of the NHS, how many years has a woman's life expectancy risen by? 17 years. In 1948, the average age of a UK woman was 66. Now it's 83, so good on the NHS. I mean, I'm sure a lot of other things have gone into that, but fair, fair dinkum, fair play. 17 years. Now, if someone's put 17 years in one month, or 16 years in 11 months, fair enough. Edward Jenner famously created the first vaccine for smallpox. I mean, it wasn't the first thing to try and prevent smallpox, but the first vaccination. And the boy, bless him, James Fibbs. Eight-year-old James Fibbs. Question five. Alexander Fleming what, discovered what wonder drug it is penicillin. Antibiotic, penicillin. Why is Dolly the sheep famous? I remember Dolly. Dolly was the first mammal to be cloned. First cloned mammal in history. Didn't live long, though, from my understanding of it. Poor Dolly. But hey, that sheep's going to be more famous than most people in history. So there we go. Well done, Dolly. Who is our current health secretary? Good old Matt Hancock. I say good old. I don't know him. He might not be very nice. But hey, we're all rooting for you, Matt. Keep going. <laughs> Question eight. The previous health secretary, Jeremy Hunt, again, this is my favourite favorite moment of the 2012 Olympics, and that includes Super Saturday when we won three golds in like an hour. But my favourite moment was Jeremy Hunt, and Google it if you haven't seen it before. He gets a little bell, he's on HMS Belfast, the heavy cruiser, and he rings it and the bell comes off and hits a group of bystanders. And it's actually absolutely hilarious. So he rings a bell and it falls off. If you've got anything that sounds like that, no pun intended, um, then you get a point. Question nine. Nye Bevan, Secretary of State for Health that brought in the NHS. He is from Wales, 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 Wales. From mining background. And question 10. Approximately how many people work for the NHS? 1.7 million. 1.7 million. If you're within 100,000, I'll give you a point for that. If you're in 100,000, I'll give you a point for that. Apparently, it's the fifth largest employer in the world. Fair enough. Behind the US military. Okay, so total up your answers for question, uh, round two. Hope you've got a few there. Round three is a music round. Um, right, okay, so I'm going to try and go through this again. I won't play quite as much of the song. But because it will just take ages to load again, and I'm, just, I'm sure you're hoping this ends soon. But anyway, this is um, song one. It's obviously Thomas the Tank Engine. Now, Thomas the Tank Engine was first, well, again, it's Thomas the Tank Engine. If you put Thomas and Friends and you really care about it, Fair enough, but it, Thomas Tank Engine or Thomas and Friends. And that was made in the 80s. I thought it was the 70s, but it was made in the 80s. And it was first aired in the 80s. And obviously Ringo Starr famously uh, narrated it. So Thomas and Tank Engine, Thomas and Friends, first aired in the 80s. Now the next one, Song 2, is my favourite TV show. I'm hoping some of you got it. The Wire, The Wire, and that's from the noughties, first aired in 2002, The Noughties, that is The Wire. If you haven't seen it, it's arguably the best TV show ever made, in my opinion. Um, if I was to edit Wikipedia, I probably would make it into the best TV show, but it's that or The Sopranos, but hey, it's you choose. If you prefer EastEnders, fair enough, but no, The Wire, outstanding. And this is my favourite miniseries. Rewatched it, probably rewatch it once every year. Ah, oh, that's great, really good. And so many actors who were their first roles in this. That's Band of Brothers, and again, that's 2001. Band of Brothers. P, uh, actors like Michael Fassbender, Tom Hardy, James McAvoy, Simon Pegg. Some of their first roles are in Band of Brothers. So that was song three. Naughties again, that's a band of brothers. Should get this, I hope you would. A little bit of nostalgia, that's Thunderbirds, and that's the 60s. It was first aired in the 60s. 
the Thunderbirds, or Thunderbirds Argo, depending on which, what you want to talk about. Right, this one, I'm hoping you'd know it. Press and play. That's Friends, and that's the 90s. First aired in the 90s. So that is Friends. It hasn't aged well, anyone who's watched it recently. 